great to connect. And I'm really excited looking here at the press release of your tour dates. Now, it's very interesting to me that you're kind of doing a mix of headlining dates, opening up for huge bands, and then you also have your revival shows. How long did this whole tour itinerary come together? Oh, man. You know, I mean, it's, it's ever evolving um, and always kind of, you know, I don't know. I mean, we just we pretty much stay out you know, is, is our philosophy. Um, right now I'm home for a 19 day break. And that's, that's about as long a break as, as we, we ever take the rest of the time. We're just go, go, go. Well, ideally so will it uh, be like this for years to come for you? Will it always be go, go, go? Well, I mean, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but I mean, as long as it feels good. And I mean, we're, we're really at our, at our peak of our powers here. You know, we're not, you know, just starting out in our 20s, and we're not winding down in our 60s. We're right in the middle. Everybody's in their 40s for the most part. And this is it. This is like, you know, this is peak time. So, um, you know, I could see a point where maybe the the band would want to take a year to, you know, whatever it might be, have have babies or 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 do a solo record or or or, or score a movie or fill in the blank. Uh, but for right now, I mean, this thing feels great. And for somebody who hasn't seen one of your shows live, what is the set list like? And is it a totally different show from the revival to the regular band? Yeah, I mean, the set list is is something that's very kind of ever evolving, also and and malleable and. You know, we, we really are now entering our second year as well. So we're really being, you know, conscious about like keeping track of what we're playing and what cities so that when we return, we're not, you know, you know, essentially repeating, you know, any kind of experience for anyone. We want everything to be fresh. Um, the revival, you know, the idea there, the blueprint, so to speak, for that is to, uh, you know, have, have, <clears throat> an opening band uh the first year it was Dwayne Betts the second year um we just we had too much going on um so it was an entire evening of of the revival uh this year the Almond Betts band is actually the opening act for 45 minutes uh but then beyond that the set list is really relegated to bringing up uh, a guest star and featuring a song that they're famous for and then having them do an almond centric song to celebrate my dad's birthday. So, um, you know, a great example, uh, last year, you know, when we brought G love out, we did his hit cold beverages and then he sang Melissa, which was, which was a really great, you know, version of it and, and really something unique and different for the evening. So that's the basic blueprint, uh, for the family revivals kind of, you know, based it loosely on the last waltz by the band, you know, where, uh, you know, you kind of come out and warm up the crowd and then you bring out the first guest and it's just guest after guest after guest. So. Right. And looking at that itinerary, I see that you played the Beacon Theater last week and you have a big Beacon Theater show coming up in six weeks or so. Does the Beacon Theater mean as much to you as I think it does? Yeah. I mean, it's, th those are hallowed halls, man. I mean, that's, you know, I, it really hit me this last time that we went, um, because it, 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 the thing that hit me was that that was only second to, to our family's home. I spent more time with my dad in, in that building than anywhere else in the world other than our home. So like, you know, it's, it's heavy duty for us. It, it, it's certainly meaningful. Um, there's so much history. You know, there's so many vibrations in that room. I forget the exact number. You know, one could certainly Google it. But I, I want to say it was like 238 sold out performances in that room, um, which is just, you know, an incredible feat. And uh, the vibrations that were, you know, that were had in that room, um, it's, it's extremely special to us. So, yeah, last week was was amazing because we, we went in there and, and, you know, the first time we played it last year, um, 
I was petrified, man. I was, I was kind of, I was freaked out and I don't, I don't get freaked out when I perform. I, I get excited. But that time I was like, I was kind of freaked out this time. It was, everybody was really confident and comfortable and you know, everybody really brought their a game and, and it was really special to, you know, to, to get in there and do our thing. So everybody was way more comfortable this time. Well, as you said earlier, you don't have a crystal ball and all that, but would one of the goals of the band to be able to do a residency along the lines of the almonds there, or do you just want to do your own thing and not be associated with that per se? Well, I mean, a residency is something that's born out of a band being popular. You know, that's the only reason you do a residency. The only reason you do multiple gigs at a venue is because you've sold out one night and you need to go to two and then you've sold out two and you need to go to three. Uh, if we were to do that at the beacon, absolutely. I would be into that. And that doesn't mean that we're copying the almond brothers. Uh, it, 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 it means that we're getting more popular, you know, and, uh, fans are already screaming for multiple nights at the beacon. You know, um, I think that they do want to remember, you know, some of their most beloved times. Um, if we can help them do that, you know, yeah. If the band's growing to where we get to do multiple nights at the beacon, that's such a beautiful thing. You know, um, you know, I'd be all for it. We need to start with, with, a, with our first night <laughs> and we need to sell that guy out and then, uh, and then, you know, see about doing a second. And earlier this year, you put out down to the river. Do you have a favorite song on the album? Oh, uh, you know, it's like, it's like trying to pick your favorite child, right? Um, it's not fair. <laughs> sure. Oh, uh, you know, man, you know, I, I would, I would have to say the final song long gone. Uh, that was the first song that I wrote with Dwayne. And um, it was really kind of a, you know, it was a barometer for, for what was to come, you know, because when we sat down to write songs, it was like, Hey, let's, let's see if we can write together. It, it wasn't, Hey, let's write an album. It was, let's see if we have chemistry. I mean, we, we already, you know, are like brothers and, and hang out and, you know, have similar tastes in music and, you know, similar aesthetics and approaches and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But can we actually sit down and, and write a cohesive song together that displays both of our journeys and displays both of our, you know, um, musical intentions. And, uh, and sure enough, you know, that was, that was like, heck, if we could write a song like long gone, then I think this, you know, this thing will have legs and, you know, sure, sure thing. It's uh that's an important, you know, kind of piece to the, uh, to the union. I see that you licensed the album to BMG rather than pursuing a traditional record deal where the company owns it. How did you know to do that? <laughs> a good magician does not give away all of his tricks, my man. <laughs> uh, so that is much, re that is as much reveal on that as you will get. <laughs> Okay, makes a lot of sense. So you per <laughs> you personally, is it true that you grew up more of a Megadeth fan than say a jam rock fan? Oh no, I, I you know that's that's a pretty subjective way of putting it. I, I would say that, you know, by age thirteen or fourteen, my collection included uh everything from Megadeth to Miles Davis, uh, and all points in between. I mean, I was certainly hip to the dead and and hit to uh, Pink Floyd, you know, and Hendrix and, you know, but I also listened to uh, The Clash, The Cure, The Smiths, The Ramones. Um, but then I listened to like 60s hippie shit too. So just super well-rounded. I mean, I think everyone in that era went through a metal phase, but it, I don't think it's, fair to call it a phase if i'm going to see iron maiden like a month and a half ago which i did <laughs> seeing iron maiden a month and a half ago does that inspire you to eventually be able to come out of a plane on stage <laughs> that is probably the most ridiculous interview question i've ever been asked um no no <laughs> i mean obviously theatrics are a huge part of their deal we'll leave it to uh the metal masters and 
we'll just go out on our, you know, our hippie rugs with our, with our killer visual show behind us and, uh, and throw down, you know, 18 minute songs. Well, I take a lot of pride in having <laughs> asked you such a ridiculous question. Uh, so closing Good. Devin, any last Good. words for the kids? No, man, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're really stoked to, you know, wrap up our first year as a, as a band and the fans have been great. You know, the reactions to the, uh, to the record were really above and beyond. And, um, you know, we can't wait to see what year number two has in store.